Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Merry Christmas and welcome to the Pleasant Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church. I love seeing the church full. There is uh, joy and excitement, and we hope that today's worship provides uh, a spiritual connection with the Lord today. Uh, we want to welcome all those on, online as well. So we have a, a treat for everybody. We have a musical program. We hope that you enjoy it. Um, I would say anything that has nothing to do with Christmas, leave it outside and then just enjoy the music, enjoy the connection, enjoy each other, and most importantly, enjoy um, what Jesus did for us coming to this world. I have a few announcements that I'm going to um, mention here. One, today's offering is for local conference advance, uh, just a FYI for um, those who are asking. Also tonight, there's a gym night tonight at 5 p.m., basketball, and then at 8 p.m., the volleyball starts. So our gym is located in the back of our campus, so if you're interested in coming and doing basketball or volleyball, 5 and 8 p.m. is the time where the gym will be open. I also want to point out that January 2024, can't believe it's already 2024, we're starting, the church is starting a, a 10 days of prayer. Uh, starting Wednesday, January 3rd through the 13th, and in between there's going to be a capstone speaker, uh, Pastor Martin Kim. So we want to char start um, 2024 full with power, praying for each other, praying for the church, um, and praying for the impact that we will have in 2024. So anybody who's interested in connecting, if you can't make it every night, try to make it once or twice a, 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 a night and it's gonna be a blessing. So having all of you there. So we invite each one of you to start uh, praying all together uh, for the benefit of this church. We also have a reception following the service. So it's a light refreshment, so after here, You'll see tables right outside the doorway. You're all welcome to stay, uh, fellowship, and just enjoy a, a nice little Christmas spirit for all of you. Um, and my last announcement, just uh, in, in the bulletin, you'll see the financial picture um, for our tithe and offerings in the church. I just want to mention that even though you see 67,000 negative, we've been receiving a surge of offerings. We're actually half of that. So praise the Lord, we're actually about 30K negative. If the surge continues by the end of the year, we will have met our budget for all the ministries that we have done throughout the year. I just want to thank each one of you who, who love the church, who uh, you pray and you give with all your heart because we've been able to have a successful 2023. Um, the Lord has been using the Pleasant Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it's all because of you. Uh, of course, God blessing us and we bless the church as well. So just want to encourage you with that. As well, also, we um, keep in mind we have a member help fund. So if any of you or any of us are having experiencing, just needs a little extra push, con contact uh, Pastor Mitch or Rena or our office, and, and we have a member help fund just in case you need that extra push. Um, that's what we're here for. We're all connected together, and we share each other's joys. We share each other's sorrows. We help each other. So I just want to point that out. But again, happy Sabbath. Welcome to everybody. Let's just enjoy an amazing uh, service that we have programmed for, um, for, uh, for the glory of God. Many years ago, a hymn writer wrote these famous words, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Imagine that, in a little town, the everlasting light shone, hidden from the view of most, concealed from the prying eye of the curious. 
unseen to the greats of the world, camouflaged from those who would do him harm, and the one who is light, enlighten the darkness of our world. Today, in honor of that event and in the hope of a savior to come, we light all the candles of the Advent wreath. May the everlasting light of Jesus shine into your hearts and homes. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we are so excited to be gathering to worship you, Lord, the King of Kings, who came to this world 2,000 years ago, Lord, you coming here for us to save us. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would receive our worship, that, Lord, your presence would be felt and that we would be changed as we leave this place, Lord. Bless us, remind us of your wonder and your love for us, Lord, and may your Holy Spirit be present, is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. Good morning, church family. Uh, what a pr uh, privilege it is, and what a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? On this beautiful morning, God has given us so much to be thankful for. And let's just uh, come before our Lord, and as you are able, if you're able um, to kneel, let us kneel before the Lord our God and seek Him and His wonderful, loving face.
Father God, thank you so much this morning. What a blessing you are to us. Lift up your head, O you gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, for the King of glory comes in. And Lord, mighty to behold are you. How wonderful that we can look upon you. Lord, that we can see who you are. By faith, through reading of your word, through prayer, through many avenues of nature, and through all sorts of ways, Lord, you are showing yourself that you are here and that you are God. Lord, we give our hearts and lives to you now as we tremble in the presence of our mighty God, as we see and we are excited about your goodness, Lord, your love and your giving to humanity, giving to each one of these families, Lord, during this special time. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege, Lord, of praying now. Lord, we seek healing, Lord, in our hearts and our minds, healing in our families. Lord, healing in our school, healing in our church, Lord. Lord, there are many with spiritual sickness. There are many with physical sickness. Lord, there are many who need you, Lord. And we all need you, Lord, from the smallest to the greatest, Lord, whoever we are. Lord, we also want to lift up uh, Yolanda's father, Lawrence, Lord, that you will provide healing for him. And Lord, there are others who are, have not been mentioned here, Lord, that are in need of you. And Lord, we want to lift up our small requests, our big requests, whatever it is, Lord, and now present them before your throne. Hear us, O oh God, and thank you so much for what you have done this week, Lord, in healings as we've reached out to you, to your glory. Let your glory be known throughout the whole earth, Lord. Let the angels sing. Let us sing, Lord, and present the gift that we have because of the greatest gift that was given to us in Jesus. Thank you so much, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time for our children's story. So all the children, you know, come up and don't forget to collect the dollar bills, the $20 bills, $100 bills, collect them and bring them up and put it in the little schoolhouse here. We're having a wonderful children's story by Auntie Ashley. Yes, it's gonna be wonderful. So come on, come on up everybody. So I have a small request before we start the children's story. We're having a very, we have a very full house this morning and there are folks in the back looking for seats. If at all possible, I'd like to ask everybody to scoot in towards the middle as much as possible so that we can accommodate everybody. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Hi. I don't forget the people back there. They're all so important. I hope everyone is doing well. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Wow, that was nice. Well, I'm Miss Ashley, and I'm going to tell the children's story today. Funnily enough, it's going to be about babies. What? Uh, my friends in the back are going to help me. I'm so... Babies are pretty special, right? We so special that sometimes we have different words for babies. Let's see if my friends can pull up a couple things. If they don't have it, it's okay. Let's see. There. Oh, do you see that picture, everyone? When you have a cat, what is a baby cat called? A kitten. That's right. Let's see if we have another photo. Oh. A puppy, that's right. Sometimes babies have special words. Do we have another one? We might, oh, lamb. I have some intelligent children up here. Okay, a cub, a cub. I think I have one or two more. Does anybody know what a baby koala is called? A joey, and a joey, just like a kangaroo. And then the last one, a chick. You all are right. Well, babies are that special that they sometimes have a special name. Weren't those pictures pretty adorable? Yeah, they're pretty adorable. Well, when somebody has a baby, there's often fun celebrations and parties around that. Baby showers, birthdays. Does anybody here like to go to a good birthday party? Yeah. What do you usually see at a party? What kind of things are this? What was that? Cake. 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 Yes, that's true. I saw some. <gasps> Presents. Presents. That's right. Did I see something over here? Anybody want to say what they see at a party? Christmas tree. Oh, for Christmas, a Christmas tree. And one more. Balloons. 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 Decorations. That's right. So, oh, you, you wanted, you've been really eager. Huh? Really you can't forget the food. The food. Oh. I agree, well done. Those are all awesome answers, that's right. But there's one special baby that I'm thinking about. Do you know who that special baby is? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. Did you know though he didn't have a baby shower? And I don't know if he had a birthday party. When he was born in the manger, they didn't have balloons. I don't even know if they had food or a big feast. They didn't have, they, they did have presents though. So it was so special, this birth was so special that the wise men and the shepherds traveled so far and they didn't have a car, they didn't have an airplane, they traveled so far to see the baby Jesus. They had a few gifts, but you know what was the biggest thing? They came to praise him, to worship him, to adore him to just love him. That's one of the biggest gifts, right? Well, what's so special is that every day, and especially during this Christmas season, we are all invited to come adore and worship the baby Jesus. Every day. That's right. You're all invited to come to him when you have anything that's going on. So my friend, Mr. Melgar, I'm sure you know him, has an amazing voice. He's going to sing a special song. And it's about going to worship the baby Jesus. Not just in gifts, not with big parties and balloons, and I know we all love a big party, but just to come to him, to worship him, and adore him, and to praise him. So when we go back to our seats, I invite you to listen carefully to his song about adoring the baby Jesus worshiping and praising him and realizing how special it was that he came down here on this earth just for each and every one of you. So before we go back to our seats, shall we pray? Who would like to say prayer? And I know I'm going to get a lot of hands, right? Who would like to say prayer? You! Is that Marie down there? Marie, would you like to say prayer? Yeah. Oh, it's Marie's sister. <laughs> How are you? Uh, Would you like to say prayer for us? Uh, okay, let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and fold our hands. 
Dear Jesus, thank you for Mommy and Daddy and Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You want to pray? We have one more prayer. Is that okay? Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for Mommy and Daddy and Bonnie. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, no. We have one more. Dear Jesus, thank you for mom and daddy. And we are not five. And I want to respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, you can never have much too, too much prayers, my friend. So thank you, my, my friends, for coming to listen to the story. Why don't we head back to the seats and listen to the beautiful song that Mr. Melgar is about to sing for us. En la noche los pastores a sus ovejitas velan Ángeles del cielo alaban, ángeles del cielo cantan Pastorcito sí, pastorcito sí a adorar al niño a Adorar al niño que en Belén está, que en Belén está in the evening there were shepherds resting while the flocks were grazing angels from the heavens told them heaven king is near you sleeping shepherds go to him go and praise your king go and worship jesus go and worship jesus born in bethlehem born in bethlehem Go and worship Jesus, go and worship Jesus, born in Bethlehem, born in Bethlehem. Con alegre reverencia, en la bella noche buena, los cristianos hoy alaban, los cristianos todos cantan, pueblos o oh, venid, pueblos o oh, llegad, a adorar al niño, a adorar al niño, que en Belén está, que en Belén está, a adorar al niño, a adorar al niño, que en Belén está, que en Belén está, a adorar al niño, a adorar al niño, que en Belén está, que en Belén está, que en Belén está, que en Belén está.
Many people have written accounts about the events that took place among us. They used their source material, the reports circulating among us, from the early disciples and other eyewitnesses of what God has done in fulfillment of his promise. Having carefully investigated all these accounts from the beginning, I've decided to write a careful summary for you to reassure you of the truth of all you were taught. It all began with a Jewish priest, Zechariah who lived when Herod was king of Judea. Zechariah was a member of the priestly order of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary and burn incense in the Lord's presence. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. Zechariah was in the sanctuary when an angel of the Lord appeared, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear. Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for God has heard your prayer. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. He will have great, you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice with you at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will persuade many Israelites to turn to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah, the, the prophet of old. He will precede the coming of the Lord, preparing the people for his arrival. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will change disobedient minds to accept godly wisdom. How can I know this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of it was he who sent me to bring you this great news, and now, since you don't believe what I have said, you won't be able to speak and the child, when the child is born or until the child is born, for my words will certainly come true at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures that he must have seen a vision in the temple sanctuary. He stayed at the temple until his term of service was over, and then he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children.
Happy Sabbath, church. We'd like to uh, sing uh, Away in a Manger with you, and please feel free to join us in verse 3. Now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to, a, to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will, God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say that she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. And then the angel left. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, You're blessed by God above all other women, and your child is blessed. 
What an honor it, this is that the mother of my Lord should visit me. When you came in and greeted me, my baby jumped for my baby jumped for joy the instant I heard your voice. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Oh, how I praise the Lord, how I rejoice in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and now generation after generation will call me blessed. For he, the mighty one, is holy, and he has done great things for me. His mercy goes on from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty and arm does not tremendous things. How he scatters the proud and haughty ones. He has taken princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things. He has spent the rich away with empty hands. And how he has helped his servant Israel. He has not forgotten his promise to be merciful, for he has promised our ancestor Abraham and his children to be merciful to, to them forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. This next song is actually page 162 in the hymnal. And you'll need to know that because you're going to sing the last verse with me. And you'll need to learn it while I'm singing. Um, it's three verses. This is a very, very old song. And a lot of it is anonymous. Um, the first verse is the wonder of Christmas, the wonder of the incarnation, uh, that God would come down and become a human. The second verse I'm singing is about I am not worthy. I was sinking down, is the phrase. And the last verse is the verse of praise that God did this for us, which happens to be, it's the third verse that I'm singing, but it's the second verse in the hymnal. So be ready for that. All right, thank you. love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of Bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul. To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down when I was sinking down sinking down when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown Christ laid aside his crown for my soul for my soul, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. Now everyone, to God and to the Lamb, to God and to the Lamb, I will sing, I will sing to I will see. 
Now Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, being a just man, decided to break the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child within her has become conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet Isaiah. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born. Now it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, and it was a boy. The word spread quickly to her neighbors and relatives that the Lord had been very kind to her, and everyone rejoiced with her. When the baby was eight days old, all the relatives and friends came for the circumcision ceremony. They wanted to name him Zechariah. Father. No, his name is John. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth. So they asked the baby's father, communicating to him by making gestures. He motioned for a writing tablet, and to everyone's surprise, he wrote. His name is John. <laughs> His name is John. <laughs> Instantly, Zechariah could speak again, and he began praising God. Wonder fell upon the whole neighborhood, and the news of what had happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Everyone had heard about it, reflected on these events, and asked, Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited his people and redeemed them. He has sent a mighty savior from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through the holy prophets long ago. Now we will be saved from our enemies from all who have hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors in remembering his sec sacred covenant with them, the covenant he gave to our ancestor Abraham. We have been re recused from our enemies so that we can serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness forever. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the light from heaven is about to break upon us and give us light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of, of death and to guide us in the path of peace.
play that last one. He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was obviously pregnant at this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. These will be his royal titles. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule forever with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David. The passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this. For that night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joys for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David, and this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on the earth and When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them and because they had seen the child, just as the angel had said.
Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. This was the time, this, then it was time for the purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered a sacrifice according to what was required in the law of the Lord. If a woman cannot afford to bring a sheep, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. One will be for a whole burnt offering and the other for a purification offering. The priest will sacrifice them, thus making atonement for her, and she will be ceremonially clean. Now there was a man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a righteous man and very devout. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he eagerly expected the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now I can die in peace. As you promised me, I have seen the Savior you have given to all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Joseph and Mary were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, This child will be rejected by many in Israel, and it will be their undoing. But it will be the greatest joy to many others. Thus, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phineal, of the tribe of Asher, and was very old. She was a widow, for her husband had died when they had been married only seven years. She was now 84 years old. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She asked about Jesus to everyone who had been waiting for the promised king to come and deliver Jerusalem.
Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Now Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where did the prophets say the Messiah would be born? In Bethlehem, for this is what the prophet Micah wrote.
Oh, Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah, for a ruler will come out of you who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I may go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went home another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up and flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to try to kill the child. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there till Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Hosea. I called my son out of Egypt.
Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him the star first appeared to them about two years earlier. Herod's brutal action fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah. A cry of anguish is heard in Ramah. Weeping and mourning, understrained Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and told him, Get up and take the child, his mother, back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph returned immediately to Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned the new ruler was Herod's son Archelaus, he was afraid. Then in another dream, he was warned to go to Galilee. So they went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what was spoken by the prophets concerning the Messiah. He will, he will be, be called, called the Nazarene. Nazarene. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom beyond his years, and God placed his special favor upon him. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love and an overflowing supply of salvation. He himself will free Israel from every kind of sin. You may be seated. I want to take a moment right now to recognize the director of our special Christmas music program, Ruth Tindugan. Thank you so much. Could we give her a hand? <laughs> Lots of time and energy in working with each one of you to participate. Thank you, Ruth, for your time and effort. We were very blessed today. Thank you. And also, everyone's invited to a special uh, courtyard reception right after the service. I hope you can stay by. And also, if you need special prayer, we're here for you right up here in the front. Come forward. We'll pray with you. And now let us close with prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we have been blessed by your story. Coming to this world, Lord, as a helpless baby. But Lord, becoming our Savior. 
And Lord, we know that you are returning a second time, the second advent, and we look forward to that soon return. But Lord, in the meantime, would you bless us and keep us, make your face to shine upon us, be gracious to us, and give us your peace. Is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen.